Hey guys, today I'd, look, I'd like to look at some basic concepts of geometry. So some of the things you will have to calculate when doing your geometry homework. And I'll start off um, by the most basic concept in geometry, which is a length. Length. So basically, let's just call this length here A. Easy enough. And A could be, well, 5 centimeters. Let's just have that here. Then, what you will also come across is not only length, but area. Now, area looks different. It's not only lengths added up, what you will calculate with lengths, for example, is circumference. So, if we have a square that is a length plus a length plus a length plus a length, that gets us our circumference. And the unit will still be centimeters, we just add them up. In the area, it will look somewhat like this. We still, we have a length but we rise it up uh, another dimension, so it goes up here. So we have a length, let's call that A, and call that B. And now we have a length over the length of B. We have the length A over the length of B. And that gives us, kind of would look like that. So you have A, this time, another time, another time. Not a time, not a time, you get the idea. All the length of B. So A times all the length of B. And instead of adding like we did here, you can just add a length to another. We now multiply because we have the length A, 5 centimeters, and let's say B was a little longer, it was um, or, or less long actually, it's say it was 4 centimeters times 4 centimeters and that now gives us an area, so let's multiply that out. Four, uh, 5 times 4 is 20 and now the centimeters times the centimeters gives us centimeters squared. So you know square is something like this, it also has an area inside of it, just like what we calculated. Now you will also have to calculate the volume, for example, of a prism or a cube. How does that look like? Um, oh, well, red is a little drastic of a color. Let's see if that blue works. Volume. Okay, so how do we get that? We, again, start off with a length, but I won't draw it looking on top, I will draw it looking from the side. So we have a length, and we want to form an area, so we have another length, and again, that will form us the, the base, it will form us a square like we have here. So, again, that A all the time A times B and now well you know volume that usually always something three-dimensional looks will look like something like like that like a cube so now it needs to get up it needs to go up and let's say it goes up uh, again a little less so um, yeah, it goes up over this height, let's call that C. And now we have the area AB and times C. So this area, not only this one time, but we put it on top of it another time and another time and again one time and another time and I hope you understand what's happening here. Much like we formed the area 
out of the length, we now formed a cube. We now formed a volume out of the area. So now how do we get that if we calculate it? Well, again we have dA, which is 5 centimeters times the 4 centimeters of the length of B and now all of that times let's say that was 2 centimeters times 2 centimeters and we already know 4 centimeters times 5 centimeters times 4 centimeters was 20 centimeters squared and now times 2 centimeters gives us 40 centimeters to the power of 3 so cubical which means it describes a volume that's how you can imagine it now if you if you have to calculate the circumference of something let's say the circumference of um, a triangle well you know I gotta know how long this is, how long this is, how long this is, and then add them all together so I get the circumference. I hope, let's say, um, let's say those are of even length, so this is A and this would be C, so we have 2 times C plus A would give us a circumference. There we go. And you, you now thought, okay, we have we have this, um, well, this area, and how do I get the circumference? Well, I just open it up. I lay it out there. So I have this length of C, uh huh, this length of A, okay, and another times C. So two times C and one time A. That's our circumference. You you opened the whole thing up. And let's see if we can take that again one dimension higher. So, let's say you have a prism that has as a base a triangle. But now it's uh, three dimensional, so it extends to the back there and then again has this triangle as. The punctured lines are the ones you, you don't see because you're you're looking right at it, so you only see the hard outlines here. And now, very often you have to calculate the surface of something like that. So, surface. Now you have to think again. I have to lay it out somewhere that I can calculate the lower dimension because here from the area we laid out the circumference the, two, uh, the, the one dimensional line and now we try to lay that out so deconstruct it from a three dimensional object into the flat and the best way to, to, to do that is to somehow see if you can unravel it in your mind so let's open let's open that side that triangle down and do the same over there so now we have the triangle that one is opened up here. We still have all that standing up there. Okay. But now it's hollow, it's like a tube, so you can see inside there. And we've already opened that triangle up in the back as well. So now we need to open those two sides up, like the sides of a tent. And then they would look something like that. If we open them up, so we have the one here on the back side. We have the bottom one and we have that top one and still the two triangle oops the two triangles that would close it up. And now you see you only have one, two, three areas that surround the whole thing and another two areas that close it up at the ends. So everything that's left is for you to calculate the areas and you already know to do that so you broke it down from a 
three-dimensional object from a prism into an area and can easily calculate the surface. Okay, see you next time.